Hello everybody, I'm Captain Mom again. I intend uh, these videos as a guide to all who will be appearing for their examination, let it be uh, during the college time or for um, MOD examination. And these are limited to covering up the syllabus which are laid down for the examinations. I'm going to start right from the beginning and cover up the whole syllabus. It's a sincere uh, effort from my side and I hope that these videos are helpful. There will be few topics which will not interest people who have already been out at sea. But then I have got to look into that uh, everybody right from the beginning to end are accommodated somehow. So let me start off with uh, what is navigation. Navigation is getting a ship from one place to another by determining its position, course and distance and that basically you do it safely. And to navigate I require the position course and distance. So let us just start off with the first uh, what is po uh, positions. Now if I talk to you about, uh, asked you about what is, where is New York, um, most of you have heard of it, uh, you say it is in the uh, United States and uh, but if I asked you what is the position you won't be knowing about it or uh, nobody knows anyway. So we look into the Google, look into Google's a good uh, friend of ours and we get the results and we get the, uh, the, the position in form of its coordinates and along with the map. Now if I asked you where is Pauli Garwal, definitely most of you have never heard of it. And uh, again, you take help of our friend Google there. And then we have coordinates of Pauli and you can locate it on your word map now. Now, what have we got? We have got the coordinates. That's the position of a place. There's only one latitude and longitude for one particular place. So you get the exact position of where Pauli Garwal is. Now, if you are already see and I asked you where are you and you just told me that we are somewhere in the middle of the ocean, uh, what do you call uh, Atlantic or Pacific. Well, uh, that will not be good enough for me. I will not be able to uh, really realize where you are. So you will give me your coordinates. The coordinates are what? Latitudes and longitudes. So let us get to understand these terms. But before we get down to these terms, let's get down to Earth. Know something about Earth? I know you. most of you know about it, but uh, I'll just go through it. You know that the Earth is not a true sphere. It's oblate, you know, flattened at the top and bulging at the center. And we've been taught that it is like an orange. And what it is that its polar diameter, that polar is that uh, from north to south, is less than your equatorial diameter east and west by about 27 miles. So your north south diameter is less than the equatorial diameter by about 27 miles. This 27 miles really doesn't make much of a difference for me as a navigator. For me, if, uh, all, for all practical purposes, I'll consider Earth to be sphere. And that is how I'll be defining all the things associated with navigation here. So before I talk about latitudes and longitudes, let's get to the, uh, uh, know these terms, great circle and small circle, because when I talk about longitude and long latitudes, we'll be again talking in terms of long, great circles and small circles. This is the Earth with center C. And AB are two points which are at the extreme ends of the of the diameter of the sphere or Earth. The great circles are the circles on the surface of the sphere or Earth as we are going to be talking about on the surface of the Earth having maximum possible radius and whose plane is passing through the center of the 
earth. So I'm just drawing this circle. This is, of course, I'm showing you half of the circle. The other half of the circle there, the half semicircle, is showing, I'm going to show you as a dotted line because that is passing on the other side of the earth. This being a three-dimensional uh, figure, I'm showing it to you in two dimensions. So you have to bear with me. So these dotted lines are uh, the ones which are on the other side of the earth. And uh, if you see that the plane of this circle is passing through the center of the earth. I draw another circle from two points D and E on the surface of the earth. These two points have come up here D and E. Let me try drawing a circle through this. And the same thing that uh, this, these dotted lines are on the other side. And if you see, that the plane of this is also passing through the center of the earth. So such circles are great circles. They have the maximum possible radius and their plane passes through the center of the earth or the sphere. Now at least one great circle we can always draw if we have two points like here, D and E, if we have Two points, I can always draw one great circle through. Except if the two points are on the end of the diameter, like A and B here. And the two points are on the extreme ends of the diameter. This is a circle which has come up here. This plane passing through the center of the earth. I am showing you the second circle here. This plane is also passing through the center of the earth. I can draw as many circles, infinite number of circles. Though I am not showing you more than three here, what is here? The third one has come up here, its plane is also passing through the center of the earth. So if the two points are on the extreme ends of the diameter, I can draw infinite number of great circles. Through two points given, which are not on the extreme ends, I can always draw one great circle. Now, small circles are the circles which are drawn on the sphere, but their radius is less, it's not maximum, it's lesser than that. And their plane will not pass through the center of the earth. So here are a few examples, what I'm showing you here. All these circles would have come up, they're all small circles because their plane is not passing through the center of the earth and they don't have the maximum radius. And I've just shown you here one of the planes here. The plane is not passing, the rest of them I've shown you by dotted lines. So such circles are small circles. Now that we have understood uh, what are small circles and uh, uh, great circles, let us imagine drawing them on the surface of the earth. But before I start drawing on surface of the earth, let me just talk about north and south, east and west. I know everybody knows about it. This uh, axis, the earth rotates round its axis. Axis is the diameter of the earth, which I am showing you here. Actually, we all know that axis is the earth is inclined. But I am not going to talk about the inclined now. I will talk to it. Accorded when we start talking about astronomical navigation here, I'll just keep it straight for understanding. So, where this uh, axis cuts the earth, meets the earth, they are the north and south geographical ports. North and south. So, let me talk about north. This is north, this is south. So, I will not show you the incline now. So, we know on top we have north, at the bottom we have south. 90 degrees to the left is the west, and 90 degrees to the right is east. So, all the points which are here on this side, 90 degrees to north, they are west, east. Now, 
Now we just talked about it that uh, if we draw uh, grid circles to two points which are extreme ends of uh, the diameter and here if you look at it east and west what I have just pointed here these are also the extreme ends of the diameter. I can draw in finite number of circles through these two points east and west and this is what I have tried to show you here with two circles here. But if you can just imagine only one of the circles would be perpendicular to the axis. The rest of them will be having some angle with the plane or their, their plane will be having some angle with the axis. Now this circle which is perpendicular to the axis of the earth is called the equator. So it is making basically 90 degrees with the plane of the equator or it's making an angle of 90 degrees with the circle what I'm talking about here. And the equator divides the earth, as you can see it here, it's divided the earth into two equal halves, north and south, northern hemisphere, southern hemisphere. Now, as we said, uh, east is 90 degrees, west is 90 degrees, uh, drawing a circle through this, so the equator will be running east and west direction. And uh, when we talk about latitudes, they also run east and west. Now, I can I have drawn one circle to east and west, which is what is axis perpendicular to the uh, axis and I have named it as equator. Now these two points north and south also are the two points on the earth on the extreme ends of the diameter. So I can draw infinite number of great circles through these two points. So this is uh, one semicircle what has come up and this is the other half of the circle which is passing on the other side. And uh, if you look at it, these are the circles which are coming up. So I can draw infinite number of circles which are passing through north and south. The important thing here is to note that the semicircle, semicircle is called meridian, which will relate it to the longitudes later. And the other half of this meridians, now, these are the meridians which are coming up and these other half of the meridians which have come up here as uh, dotted lines, they form another meridian which are 180 degrees opposite this. I mean if you visualize it, this circle is going on the back side of, this, of the earth, so definitely this other part is got to be 180 degrees opposite. And if you notice here, the distance between the meridians is gradually reducing as they are approaching poles. It is the maximum at the equator because that's the largest possible circle. And as you go up, other circles, the east-west distance would be reducing. And at poles, that's the both side poles, all these circles are converging. So definitely they're meeting at a point. So at that point, the east-west distance between the two meridians would be zero. And this is what I'm trying to show you with the arrows here that the distances are reducing. Now, if I uh, can imagine uh, orange as a uh, earth, what I'm trying to show you here is the north pole here, south at the bottom, and east and west. Let me just draw a great circle through it. This great circle is divided into two equal halves, no? East and West. Let me try it with uh, another great circle. Again, 90 degrees to North, 90 degrees to 90 degrees on one side, other side, East, West. Again, it is divided into two equal halves of East, West. Same here with the third circle. So all the circles what I have drawn here, they seem to be dividing this Earth into two equal halves. So, let me take one of them, one of these great circles as a reference point. Now, I have taken this great circle as a reference and now I have divided the earth into, considering that the earth has been divided into now two equal halves of eastern and western. 
course, the equator divided in north and south. Now, this uh, this great circle is dividing it into east and west. And then we just said that semicircle is a meridian. So, semicircle, half of the circle, what we talked about, is called the prime meridian or the greenwich meridian. So, this meridian which is dividing the earth into east and west is the prime meridian and is taken as the reference to measure our longitudes. Now, I just told you that half of this semicircle is 180 degrees, so I'm just trying to explain it to you here. Now, if you look at it, I've taken half the semicircle, these are your meridians, and the other half forms another meridian. Way this one has come up is 180 degrees opposite to this. Similarly, the next one is 180 degrees opposite this. The other half of these semi great circles they form another meridian, and this will be important to for us when we talk about the come down to what is uh, longitude, what is the definition of longitude. So you should just know that. Other half forms a meridian which is 180 degrees opposite. Now, we said that the plane of the equator is 90 degrees, so definitely all the lines which are coming from north to the south, they will all be cutting the plane of the equator at 90 degrees. So, all meridians make an angle of 90 degrees with the equator. And though I have added a parallel of latitude, I will get back to parallel. So, it makes an angle of 90 degrees. It is cutting all the meridians cut the equator and the latitudes at 90 degrees. And they are joining north and south. So, they have to be running north and south. This is the true direction of north and south, a longitude, uh, a meridian. Now, equator we just talked about divides the earth into two equal halves, north and south. I have just got this equator here. It is divided into north and south. Let me just cut this orange across the equator and I'll get it something like this. Now, if uh, you can just uh, visualize a little bit, here, yeah, the circle is the great circle equator. And all these edges of the orange, what you are seeing here, of, of their um, slices of orange, like meridians, they are all meeting at the North Pole. And half of this circle is called the meridian, so I am calling it a meridian. And this I have taken as a reference, prime meridian. So if, I, if this was a, a circle, what I am talking about from 0 to 360, so from here to here, the opposite will be 180. The opposite to prime meridian would be 180 degrees. Similarly, if I have just taken, of course, it doesn't look like 30 degrees here. It looks more like 90, but I have just taken a you know, 30. If this was angle was 30, that is W and O was making an angle of 30 degrees. So, opposite would be 180 plus 30, that is 210. So this will be important for us when we start talking about the longitudes. I'll take leave of you now here. Thank you for being with me. I will uh, start off with the uh, longitudes in my next lecture. Till then, have a nice day. Thank you.